Jesse, it's Hi. good to see you. Yeah, you too. You're looking good, man. Yeah. <laughs> My <laughs> wife has other other thoughts, but oh yeah, <laughs> you feel you uh, feel like sharing her thoughts. What are her thoughts? Well, she thinks my hair is a little like goofy. Goofy? Yeah, okay. she thinks it's too long and silly, but I think it's fun. I think it's fun too. In fact, I was looking at your Instagram the other day, and when you start moving, like the way you, your hair kind of shakes, like it's fun to watch, dude. I was like, this is entertaining. This is cool, man. Like you've got a flow. Those all the, the little like micro cover songs of techno that's playing. Yeah, I saw those in the yeah. car. Did you make that beat? Did no, make- it's just like, you know, I listen to techno sets as I go to and from the coffee shop and try to put some 90s or 2000s pop music or something that was trendy at the time Ooh, maybe at the end of this i can pick a song and maybe you can sing it off the top of your Whoa, head that, that would be fun off the cuff it'd be cool if you threw yeah if you threw a beat in and just to try to quickly put a pop song on it that would be fun in fact dude i've got some <laughs> ideas already all right let's see where we're gonna go so obviously you are a creative person um I know this from experience, but I think it's obvious um, from, I think creative people, it's almost impossible to hide that you're a Mm. creative person, right? Because we're unique and everything. So tell me a little bit about your passions and like what, what inspires you and and what makes you feel like an artist? Like, what do you love? Um, I love a lot of stuff. I feel like, I'm inspired by many different things, you know, could be simple, just like a walk in nature and some something in nature inspires me. I'm inspired by technology, like computers a lot. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, is like looking at it doesn't have to be a piece of art. It could be something in the natural world. But like when you look at something and you have this combined feeling of like wonder and confusion at the same time like you don't quite understand what you're looking at I like that sensation it's like it's almost like I'm looking at something magical like I don't get it so that stirs me up can you can you think of anything that you could share with me that well that maybe you can that has given you that feeling recently recently oh dear it's rare. I think that's like maybe a feeling I've had a handful of times. One of the pieces of art I got it from is back there. I could send you like a digital file, you could overlay it, but absolutely. It's this guy. He used to work for Bukla and Associates. He's a computer programmer, but he'd do these mashups. I think this one here is like an image from Star Trek combined with like some algorithmic art he did overlaid on it. The lack of context, I didn't know any of this when I first saw it. There's like no context. It just looks like you're looking into something that doesn't exist. Like it's like a window into a world you didn't know about, like a secret world. And that captures our imagination, doesn't it? When we have that Absolutely. experience. Yeah. So, so, so tell me more about that. That can, can you think of other than that? What, what's another, you mentioned nature. So like, is there anything in nature that hmm. has given you that feeling? I think patterns in nature are inspiring, like hmm. seeing the Fibonacci sequence and the way the sunflower seeds grow, like the golden ratio. How, it, what is the Fibonacci uh, sequence for those, the Fibonacci sequence how would you explain like, that for people? Starts with um, one, one, one plus one equals two. Then you take the previous number added by the current number. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. And that so creates like, the golden ratio. Yeah, it, right? I think as you get deeper into it, like the ratio tightens. Like at first, it's like not there because your distances are so small between numbers. But as it, as you get into the deeper Fibonacci sequence, yeah, the golden ratios there. It's like one to one point 
six something. I can't remember exactly. I could be dead wrong on that actually. Well, and, and isn't that pattern found like everywhere in nature? Yeah. I mean, I'm no naturalist, but yes, I believe it's like prolific in nature. I get in the natural world. I feel like it's more like wonder and you can see mathematical foundations on it. So you kind of get wonder and like appreciation for actual structure or something. This more like mysterious thing, I feel like I don't, well, actually, yeah, I feel like I've seen that when you look at these deep sea fish that yeah. are just really like gnarly, strange, <laughs> like the, I forget the what it's called, the one that has the light, an angler fish that has the light dangling over its head. They're just like almost evil looking. I just, that kind of stuff gets me wondering and confused. It's like, well, what is going on here? So there's things on like a deeper level like that, that really get my juices flowing. And then there's just kind of just the, the surface area of the natural world. That's just gorgeous to look out at too. It doesn't require much thinking. You just kind of can appreciate the beauty of a sunset or in yeah. the same way with art too. It doesn't have to create like this weird deep sensation that I described earlier. Sometimes it's just like, oh, that's really pretty. That That's really nice. So what is it about art that you think is so captivating? Because one thing, if you look at history or you look at different cultures and art has always been a part of culture. Hmm. It's And it's one of those things that you know, you, you don't find everything repeated in cultures, but you do see art uh, and design and different cultures, you know, have different types of design. Like there's Native American patterns and designs, which, you know, it, it, it's a whole look. And it's interesting how we see the, these, uh, the diversity in people. But yet at the same time, there's this harmony that we all are expressing ourselves in some, what would you call it? Uh, some evident way that other people can behold. Hmm. That's a, it's an expression of ourself. And yet at the same time, it's an expression of our group hmm. that yeah. we belong to in a way. And art seems to always be present. I mean, I could be wrong, but is that your, the way you understand it too? I reckon that would be true. Yeah, I'm sure earliest historical findings would prove that to be true, that it's kind of been here along with us from the beginning. Because think about even going back to like Egypt, like we they've uncovered these tombs and, and explored and stuff. And we now, you know, we can visualize like, oh, what did a pharaoh look like? Or what does the Sphinx look like? And, you know, we have these images in our mind of that culture. And, you know, then you think, okay, well, then there was the Jews and they had, you know, they wore sandals and certain types of things. They had fringe on their garments. They had, they had their style. And it's mm -hmm. like these different cultures throughout the Romans, they had a certain look. I mean, you know, very militaristic. And I mean, so it's interesting when you think about how art is manifest or it's mm. expressed throughout different people and different cultures. Yeah, that's and, true. I kind of like when you said uh, Egypt, it made me think more of like historical recordings or something like the hieroglyphics may include graphics. Mm -hmm. and I think all letters are just kind of a symbology, but what I'm trying to say is I feel like that has happened with myself, like with music and things. A lot of it feels like I just want to catalog a feeling or like this experience I was going through. So like when you look back on it or re-listen to it, it's kind of like a historical record in some way. So let, okay, let's unpack that a little bit. So when you talk about an experience, what are you, if you could write in your mind the perfect song that would encapsulate an experience, hmm. what would it, what would that experience be like when you listen to it 
after you've created it? Like, what are you trying to get out of it? Is or is there anything particular? I may you... not quite understand the question. Are you saying okay. what what type of experience am I looking to create when I re-listen to it? Well, I guess I could ask you. Does the so you're inspired to let's say what make a song? Yeah. Do you have the idea first, or do you just get into the no, moment? No, I feel like it's. It? I think Michael Jackson has talked about it's other artists have mentioned this too. It's like you're discovering it as it it's almost like it makes itself. You're just sort of like a medium. It, it's almost okay. yeah, it's almost like there's this weird symbiosis you're chiseling away or... at like a mass and like the thing reveals itself. You're just kind of like a medium, I guess is the that's it sounds kind of weird or something like you're not in control, you're being marionetteered or something, but Oddly enough, it sort of feels like that's what's happening at times. So I completely agree. And Michelangelo, I think, said something similar, right? That okay. he felt the whatever he was trying to sculpt, he said, was already in the block of marble. That's right. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. was just trying to get it out of there, basically, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So what's interesting about that perspective of maybe where ideas come from, and I, this might sound like a weird roundabout way, but I promise I'll, I'll get us back there. Um, if we take that approach, okay, and you're working with your technology or whatever, um, and you end up producing a song, okay, and you export the song and you're like, this is, I love it. It, it captures the mood I was in or whatever I was thinking about. So when you then listen to the song after you've finished it and you've exported it and you listen back to it like a month later, does it actually, do you embody those same emotions that you had when, the, during the experience when you were creating it? Or does it give you meaning or insight into something else? I feel like it's a common, it can be a combination of that or like none of that at all, just depending on where you're at. I think there's states of being where you can re-listen to it and kind of sink right back into what it was that inspired you. And I feel like, so there's that. And then there's like almost looking at it indifferently, depending on where you're at. But I do think that, yeah, when I want to kind of listen back to these things just to see like, where was I at or what was I thinking? What was I feeling? You can get sucked back into those sensations and kind of appreciate them from new perspectives. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's kind of a clear answer or just muddied. But. No, it, well, it's interesting because one, one question that I, I've been it's 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 just bizarre how much this resonates with so many people and i've mentioned it before um and i might have even mentioned it to you but i've come across different creative people different artists some will swear to you that the ideas it uh they don't come up with the idea really they feel like the idea it's i hate to use the well i'm not going to use the, it it's almost like this idea just grabs hold of you and suddenly you're like, mm -hmm. you're inspired and you make this thing and you produce it. And then it's like, well, where did the idea come from? Did it come yeah. from you? Did it yeah. come from someone else or where did it come? Now, some people do really strongly swear that ideas come from outside of us, that we're just reacting to an experience. And that reaction ins inspires us and then we produce something else. And then there's others, though, that feel like, no, no, creativity is very much a disciplined process of experimenting with my technology, applying some patterns of, you know, if you're programming a drum, drum machine and you already know some patterns and you start building, like you mentioned, layers and patterns and different some creative people look at their process in that way more like a mm -hmm. an, an accumulated experience over time 
you know, compressed into whatever you're doing now that yeah. is a consequence of all your musical experiences now combined into your power of whatever you're doing at the moment. Um, so what, what what's your impression about that? I guess it's sim similar to what I expressed earlier. I feel like there's content that people have made. Well, how do I say this? It's just kind of <laughs> like I said, sometimes in nature, there's like a, a mathematical thing you can kind of look at and see the reason behind what you're looking at. Other times you look at things and there seems to be, there is no groundwork. It just sort of seems intangible, like it's beyond reality. So I feel like, yeah, creatively, I feel like I've approached creative works where I have like a really clear, almost like rationale for what I'm doing, what I'm making. And then also I can get into certain other works where it feels like that context or re rationale is missing. And I think I, find, I end up liking the stuff more, just like this piece I, I told to you, where it's like, it's wonder and confusion. You don't really understand what's behind it. If that, you, that kind of makes sense? It makes complete sense. And okay, cool. th the reason why, at least I think it makes sense, is because if you think about the way your personality has to be structured from what it seems like the psychology suggests is that they don't have a proven way to measure creativity to see like mm. how creative a person is um, interesting however the one personality trait that creativity met or correlates with very closely is openness to new experience oh interesting now think about this the more open you are to trying something embarking on an adventure like let's say someone says hey we want to go river rafting. Now, some people might be like, whoa, I've never done that. Let's do it. Like, woo, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And other people, if they're really full of negative emotion or neurotic, you know, they might immediately say, oh, but look at the river and the water's running fast and there's rocks. And, and they're, because their openness to experience is much lower, hmm they don't experience as much, but creative people, the higher in openness you are to, to ex especially openness to new experience, um, you seem to really start finding these like almost genius level creative people, the people that set the standard, like you mentioned Michael Jackson earlier, it's like mm -hmm. certain people that do something that is so either different or unique that you just it's impossible to ignore how powerful their art is mm -hmm. you know and yeah. so if you have people that are open and willing right. to try new things and experiment and not necessarily have a rationale for what they're doing mm -hmm. they're willing to just kind of throw themselves into the the moment into the experience and see where it takes them and i think that's really interesting that the more open you are to experience potentially the more creative you are if i could ask you something i'm kind of curious how did they how did they determine that the more open you are kind of can be a metric for how creative you are did they have some study they did yeah so i know first of all you have to do uh if you model your personality traits off of the big five personality model um i can explain that real quick um they use an acronym ocean so okay. o is for openness c is for conscientiousness E is for extroversion, A is for agreeableness, N is for neuroticism. So think of it like this. Extroversion, positive emotion. You're filled with positive emotion. Uh, 
and that can break down into being uh, very outgoing. And, um, you know, you're, you're one of those people that's very charismatic. You come into a, a room and if you're extroverted and filled with positive emotion, like, you know, you're going to be one of those people probably that attracts other people to them. Right. Now, conversely, if you're the opposite of or having low extroversion makes you introverted. So you're not as, uh, what's it? well, if you're introverted, you know, you, you don't really want to be around people as much. You're not as much a people person. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting dynamic. But then neuroticism is negative emotion. So mm -hmm. if you're a highly, if you're highly sensitive to negative thoughts, like, oh, that water looks too fast, or there's some rocks, and your sensitivity is way up here, right? Like that might cause so much fear in you hmm. that you don't even attempt to get in the raft, right? Um, That's interesting. Then, the neuroticism is kind of connected to a negative experience. Can it go the other way? I would think it could. Well, it's extroversion. I see. That, I that's see. the positive emotion. So okay. it's kind of a balance between, you know, it, they're all necessary. And what's interesting is like when you see people with a very balanced uh, personality, they're much more stable, I would say. When yeah. you see a uh, really high, you know, maybe a person is really low, or let's say they're really low in openness and really high in neuroticism. Now, though that that's a a horrible combination if if you're mm. stuck with something like that because that means one, you're probably not going to meet a lot of people cuz you know, you're introverted, you're withdrawn, and then you have all this high anxiety. So you might be worried like, oh, maybe I'll get robbed or um and for here's an example. So I know somebody that's like this. And this is what will happen in their head. So we'll say, would you like to embark on this? Uh, let, let's just say, go to a movie at a theater that you've never been to before. Okay. The initial thought is, oh, that sounds fun. But then it's, oh, but that's in that part of town. And oh, and it's going to be dark when we get out. And that's not so safe. And we have a new car. Well, what if our car gets dinged? Or what if we get robbed? And so then their head fills and fills and fills with all this, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And mm. it, it's almost like they just are paralyzed into inaction. They, they can't even do anything. Yeah. And it's so sad when people have to deal with things like that. But when you think about that in a creative sense and understanding this personality and to try to answer your question, measuring your personality and understanding are you high in openness um if you're low in openness you're not a very open-minded person you're, you're probably going to be really stubborn and and hard-headed especially if you're not agreeable so i'm my temperament is i'm highly agreeable um the average woman they say is around 60 uh 60 65 percent is the mean uh average of op of uh, agreeableness in women okay. i'm like higher than that like and the average male is somewhere like i think 45 or 50 in agreeableness oh wow that's so, really interesting and i didn't have a dad around growing up so it was me and my mom and my sister and i think that in a lot of ways perhaps you know that impacted the way i developed i suppose but sure yeah there's a downside to that though too is that when you're highly agreeable you want to make other people happy like you want to see them joyful you want to see them having a good time you know yeah um it's like for example especially if i would invite people over to our house if somebody looked uncomfortable it would i would like have to take it upon myself to say like hey like what can I do to cheer you up? You know, like, wow. you know, can I make you a drink or are you hungry? Can I get you some food? Or like, you know, I want everyone to have a good time, right? Yeah. 
and when you're around friends and trusted people, that's great, you know, but sometimes that can be exploited. If people know that you're more of a, a person that's willing to please, uh, willing to, sure, yeah, I'll try to figure that out. There will be some people that just exploit you and say, mm-hmm. oh, I know that Jared, I'm just going to pile it on and pile it on and he's never going to say no. So mm-hmm. there's a downside to that. But then if you're too disagreeable, you're just like hard headed and stubborn and no one can get along with you. And I think we've all met people like that, you know, but the more that all of these, you know, uh, these five uh, traits, you know, are, are more balanced, you start to get a more balanced type of person, at least is how it seems. But then when you get these high spikes in openness, it correlates with the people that by their own self-expression are very creative. Hmm. And one way to, to ask, are you truly a creative person? Because there's this idea, and I thought this for a long time, that everybody was creative. It was this all a range, right? Some people, you know, maybe like to sew or they maybe like to knit or whatever. And then some of us, you know, make music and we make videos and we film movies and we do all types of stuff. And so I know one of the surveys or test studies they'll do is they'll say, they'll ask a group of people, how many songs have you written and produced? Hmm. How many poems or stories have you written? Um, you know, whatever you can think of, uh, how many books have you written? Uh, have you, have you ever made a movie? Have you, so, and what you'll find is people who are not creative, the answer is almost zero. How many plays, how many operas, how many, any, how many shirts have you made? How many clothing brand brands have you designed? Any of those creative questions, most people it's zero. Oh, I've never made a song. Oh, I've never written a play. No, I've never uh, drafted a book. Uh, No, I haven't directed a movie. Um, Any other really creative. But then you get someone like you and you get, you made videos, you sing, you make music, you write computer programs and technology and you under, it's like, all, across all it's almost these like it's create- on or off or something interesting yes. but what's amazing is really truly creative people are creative at a bunch of different things and mm-hmm. it's almost like and maybe i don't know if you feel this way but it's like at some point you have to create something you can't just stop and never make anything ever again Mm-hmm. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Yes, I agree with you. you. It's like you you need to fulfill that desire to be in that moment or to record what you're singing. I don't think we can control that. I think if you're creative, you have no choice but yeah. to partake in the creation. Yeah, I I think it's about the whole journaling or something for me. It's like, I don't want to, I I realize what I'm experiencing right now and what I'm doing is like a special moment in my life. I don't, I'm not always in this space. I would suggest that most of my life is, you know, you're dealing with more mundane things. So I think it's, you realize that there is a special moment and so you don't want it to just fade into nothingness you want to keep record of it capture that experience yeah yeah to share with others or to revisit yourself down the road and i feel like yeah a lot of the stuff i've done has been maybe more in the past i think these days i kind of have different inspirations or motivations for making things but i feel like in the past it was almost primarily about it was just for me the music and stuff I was doing and you know it I I agree because I I remember like I said just being so blown away at like in the beginning I think I was using reason like 1.0 or 2.0 like you know on my 
laptop, which wasn't very fast. And you, I think you had a newer white MacBook at the time. Oh yeah. And you were making glitchy beats. And I was like, he's like Aphex twin. He's better than Aphex twin. (laughs) How is he doing this? Like, were you thinking about it technically? Like what programmatically, how was this constructed? Okay. I'm surprised I, it wasn't more like you could, because I feel like that stuff was just more math. Like you look at it and you can kind of see like, oh, here's what was done here. So maybe you could clarify what you, what do you mean? Like it was, you didn't understand how I was doing it. Okay. So I guess to, so to set the context, that would have been early 2000s, right? Sounds about right. Yeah. So maybe... 2002 2003 something like that um yeah and so for people that maybe are not familiar with making music you know the old days everything was real tangible keyboards guitars everything right at the late 90s as computer technology started to get better and more people had access to computers and stuff the digital music making technology was nowhere close to where it is today. Right. 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 And to me, when I would make music on just the computer, it didn't have the same sound as what I heard in my head. And so you'd Mm -hmm. think, okay, this is such a simple, like saw wave or even just the sine wave, but the computer never quite sounded as good as maybe the real analog gear. And and maybe it was just, you know, the programs weren't as good at emulating things back then, but your stuff never sounded like limited by the technology. Your stuff always sounded like, there was no inhibition in your ability Mm. to express yourself. And so not only was the music you were making, like just so unique and unexpected and so enjoyable to, to experience for me subjectively, but then also as a musician or a producer myself, listening to it and thinking, Whoa, like that kicked, drum was a slightly higher pitch than the left so there's obviously like Mm -hmm. some modulation there's different little random stuff that's happening and wait did he mean for that note to just really you know like (laughs) so it's like i'm trying to process did he sit there and program every single one of these notes and if so like the complexity of that was just in my mind at that time so almost magical. I mean, it was like, how is he doing this? Okay. And today, you know, it could be very easy to see how someone could do that because programs are everywhere and they have self-generating patches and all this stuff. But back then it wasn't like that. Yeah. And so I always listened to your music and thought, I just don't understand how he is making music that good on a computer and being so prolific. And just, Mm. it was like every week you had a new track. I'm like, so yeah. Cause was it, was it shared on MySpace? Is this where you were listening to it? Or I can't remember what service I was even uploading it to in those days. A lot of it was on MySpace. Uh, okay. Sometimes I would be, somebody would share an MP3 with me or send okay. it me something. And um, so I was always impressed by that, by, by your approach. Um, so has, has, has your approach evolved over time or? I think, yeah, yeah, I think definitely. I think in those days, I I feel like I was more like unrestrained, an unrestrained person, just very borderline reckless. So I feel like that kind (laughs) of came into the stuff I was working on. It was like, I kind of just, yeah, I felt like that was, that was my reference. Like, oh, I kind of get what I'm experiencing here. I so i like put that into what i was working on 
these days I feel like I'm a bit more, um, I've become more like rational over time, especially learning like computer programming. I feel like that kind of gives you a whole new framework of how to think about things. So yeah, I think these days I kind of am a little more like, uh, I can kind of like f channel those waters into something a little more uh, approachable, not just for, for people like you, but maybe more like almost more mainstream, like, oh, they can appreciate this. Cause I think it's a rare bird that would appreciate that stuff that I made long ago. Well, I would like to think of myself as a rare bird. <laughs> I got to just say like, man, I've always been impressed by what you do. And cool. so what other passions aside from music, like what, what else are you? I think, sorry, yeah, I think the computer programming stuff's really inspiring. Um, I like using it to make graphics kind of okay. like geometrical looking things. So I think that's kind of fun to kind of build something that's like a program or like a seed or something and you initiate it and it produces this beautiful art. And, um, yeah, I like doing that a lot. Um, I still like enjoy making music, of course. Um, I kind of go into, I've gotten into, I think it's probably because dad just like investing, trading stocks, crypto, more so these days that can kind of be fun and um challenging just to kind of see yeah it's just it, yeah it's the way human world. emotion plays into this whole market uh i feel like there's a lot of things that just it, i just enjoy life like it's so rich let me ask you what you think about this idea of exponential changes uh, mm -hmm. be because of the last two years and the pandemic i think it i think it definitely for quite a few people it really refocused or made them kind of refocus potentially or maybe take a step back and consider like, you know, what is my approach to life? Like, am I enjoying life? Uh, am I happy? Um, so mm -hmm. has, has the pandemic in any way changed your, your vision or the way you see life or, or in any way, has it, has it changed uh, in the last two years? Mm -hmm. If anything, I feel like it kind of just put me, I feel like I'm already living in some kind of a bubble. I feel like it kind of put me, it, it insulated me more like, oh, it's much more easier to keep to myself and just work on the things I enjoy. So it kind of, it gave me comfort in that way because yeah, more like group activities were restricted and things so i feel like yeah as far as how it affected my life personally it, it kind of feel almost felt like a positive thing like it made me more comfortable which i think it could be a double-edged sword it could be a negative thing too to just get too you know in a feedback loop of your own thoughts and creativity but it, it felt like more a positive thing well, and you know, it's interesting that you say that because I I have a very similar feeling now, which I used to be very outgoing, very extroverted. And I, yeah, like you, I have found some sort of solace in kind of being insulated and, and or maybe not insulated, but just choosing very carefully like what are my experiences now like mm. so much of my, our lives are different now than they were yeah. two years ago how we interact with people has been altered at least in some way or hin hindered maybe for a period of time or changed or um and i i think for people that maybe are more introverted or 
even just being able to be with yourself and, and be creative like you, um, I think it, it, it might be easier for us as creative people to adapt to that and to to find joy and, and peace in the beautiful talents that we have, right? And so yeah. that probably gives us some sort of meaning, maybe. Would, would you agree maybe that that's kind of sustaining as well? Yeah, totally. Um, right. It's almost like easier for folks like us maybe to get through these times because we have so much richness internally to feed off of. Mm -hmm. I, no, I, I, I agree with that. And But I've seen like I've seen the the difficulties others that aren't, uh, you know, aren't really creative folks, how how much they need other people and how critical that is to their mental well-being so you can kind of see the suffering it's created i know and that that's a that's a really i've never experienced seeing so many people at once kind of go through something i guess because i mean other than 9 11 i mean there's nothing that i really remember in my life that was kind of like a whoa like this is really big this is happening to everybody you know yeah. um, or at least we're all mostly aware of it you know um but yeah that can have tremendous ripples or effects on our life but what's interesting when we think about creative people and these are not my words uh, i'm paraphrasing but essentially a true creative person has been uh, described as somebody eternally dancing right on the edge of chaos, turning little bits of chaos into habitable order. Huh. Now, I think there is beauty in that imagery because when I close my eyes, I, I picture like space. It's very black. And there's a black waterfall underneath me. The rocks are black. You can see them just enough to know that the, there's texture and there's stuff there. But you're literally right on the edge, in the water, on the edge of a waterfall with the water running around you. And it's like Niagara Falls times a thousand, man. If you fall over that edge, you can't even see the bottom. And... Gosh. A real creative person is eternally dancing right on the edge of that waterfall, never falling over, staying right on the edge, right on the fringe, doing that dance and turning all of this chaos that's just flooding our way. And we're taking it and we're grabbing it and you're grabbing this and I'm grabbing that. And we're doing our thing and we're turning it into this and we're turning it into that. And boom, here you go. Here's another new thing. And now here's another experience encapsulated and given to you. And here's this. And the thing is, if you stop, and you stop that creative process of being that eternal dancer on the edge of the chaos, you start to, to die inside literally as a creative, like, you just feel like, man, I, if I can't do anything or experience or create, it, it's like, it just feels, I don't know about you, but it makes me feel like sad and depressed, you know? And mm. as soon as I partake in a moment where I'm like in my flow state and I'm, I'm not aware of time and I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. And it's just like you said, this, relationship with maybe the technology or you know what is it doing or you're chiseling away and maybe you have your little movements and things that that you're doing and you're you're creating this thing and you're but you have to continue to do that to be fully healthy i think mm -hmm. as a as an artist um and that means taking care of ourselves you know and recognizing that as creative people, we take in all these different experiences 
we try to then understand them. You've mentioned uh, the art that you were talking about earlier that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe what is it even? Like, we may not even know. And it's just so interesting that we can take part in this process and have this in like this intimation of something beyond ourselves, this, this process. And maybe we don't know what it is. Like you said, we don't know what's in that statue or that block of marble, but yeah. we're, we're doing our thing, you know, however we do it. It's like, we know, we know it's in there. It's like, it's like you have some evidence that there's like treasure. So you just, yeah, got to work on getting it out.